to keep the initiative running. In this panel, we are very lucky to have Ms. Amrita Chodori from India SIG. Hi, Amrita. Uh, Mr. Glenn McKnight from Virtual School of Internet Governance. Ms. Sabrina Lim from APIGA. Uh, APIGA is a specialized regional academy of internet governance organized by Korean Internet Security Agencies and ICANN for the youth. Uh, Mr. Muhammad Abdul Haq from Bangladesh SIG. And last but not least, Ms. Olga Kafali from South School of Internet Governance. Without further ado, I'm handing this over to Nadira. Nadira, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shita. I would like to also thank all our speakers who are uh, uh, being with us here uh, and sharing their uh, experience in their respective uh, School of Internet Governance. I am on the uh, Executive uh, Council of uh, uh, Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance, and I will uh, brief you a little bit about our experience uh, in uh, and what we have done last year. We started by consulting our community, uh, con uh, with con our community by sending a survey on the logistic uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and we uh, kind of asking them about the duration, uh, the, the time, the, uh, whether to have it an open, uh, uh, open uh, participant or uh, registered uh, or registered participant. And the focus was uh, in the meeting. The results of the meeting uh, was uh, focused on the, uh, the 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 format of the session to have it a moderated uh, discussion topic rather than their lecture, uh, that in, 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 like in, in, in the capacity building uh, programs, usually we have lecturer to have in-depth uh, discussion. Uh, then uh, during the meeting, we try to simulate as much as possible uh, the face-to-face the, the -face environment. But on day zero, we have a, a ice-breaking uh, session uh, and also we have uh, kind of some certain activities on social media to activate the program. Uh, and during the, 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 the meeting itself, the sessions, the workshops themselves, we, we, some of the session, we have a breakout rooms. Uh, for sure, the times uh, limit is not completely different than the face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. After the meeting, we, we had... Uh, uh, we had another survey to ask the community of our alumni and the, the leaders in the field, that's well, the community that we serve, uh, about their, uh, uh, what to do after the meeting. And uh, we, we found that they need an elaborated, uh, this, uh, elaborated topics. So we, we held uh, two webinars, one uh, so far, uh, one on uh, cybersecurity, the second one, one was on uh, 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 social media, uh, social media governance, and in the coming webinar in October, we will have uh, data protection, uh, privacy, and data protection. Uh, uh, as for the the what I anticipate, and uh, for uh, for the challenges we are planning for the coming uh, uh, program, we are not sure if we are going to have it with the travel restriction whether we want to have it hybrid as we planned or not. So with this, I will leave the floor to our first speaker, Amrita Shodori, to share your experience. The time is your, the floor is yours, Amrita. Thank you, Nadira, and hello, everyone. I'll just share the INSIC perspective, which is the India School of Internet Governance. We are entering the sixth year this year. Uh, we not only have uh, fellows joining in from India, but also the SARC region, as well as uh, from African and other regions too. Uh, now, if you ask me in one word, what has been the impact of the global pandemic on schools on internet governance, I would say mixed. Um, you know, School of Internet Governance are capacity building institutions in, and in initiatives where we train uh, people from different age groups, different communities, or at least give them a high level understanding of why internet governance and why they need to be associated with it and pique their interest so that they can participate in other events. Um, you know, the face-to-face 
mode obviously has changed during the pandemic. Um, and in, in India, we had a ranging pandemic, so there was no question of people meeting. So um, we had to tweak the program. Normally, our programs are intense three days with a ground uh, day zero. Um, and we have normally classes from 9 to 6 p.m. And then we have social. So there is um, the educative part, the training part, and that as well as the uh, you know social part of intermingling. Uh, communication now that goes missing in the face to face we had to change it to a four day program with the day zero and we had to have at least two or three sessions per day so the number of sessions went down so we couldn't cover a lot many issues which we wanted we could accommodate more people from different parts of the globe um, however we were also aware there was zoom fatigue people were multitasking with their day jobs normally when they come to a place you know, they leave behind most of their baggages and they focus on the on the uh, course. But uh, when you are online and doing it from anywhere, you really don't know. You might be doing something else. Uh, the One of the advantages were we could get speakers or participants from across the globe uh, if the time permitted. But again, you know, when the speakers are there in person, it helps uh, people to ask personally questions, which many times people may be shy in raising online. Um, the timings changed. We had different timings. Uh, I think it suited many people. The session formats changed. Um, and we found people innovating and, uh, you know, making it interactive. For example, last year we had it for Mumbai. We couldn't show them, most of the people, how the city looks. So we had the Mumbai team, who was the host team, prepare a, a video and share what are the, you know, places to visit, things to eat, and it was appreciated by many people. So I've seen that innovation is one thing which people are coming as to how to keep people engaged. Funding is also an issue because, you know, when you are having an online event, mostly the funders would not be funding you saying it is online. Where are the costs? There may be a few costs, uh, for, uh, but that becomes a challenge. Uh, and it is also personally challenging, challenging for many of the volunteers who do it. Last year, while, you know, conducting it, many from the team had COVID, but they were still, you know, doing it. So these are challenges, personal challenges, and mostly they are volunteers trying to do things. So it becomes difficult. People do overcome this. I think we will never go back to the um, pre-pandemic days of, you know, face-to-face -face only, but uh, we may have, but still there would be a hybrid element involved. So I would say mixed. We are learning. We are still trying to cope and find out a best mix. But have we got it right till now? I don't know. I think we are trying to, all the schools are trying to do what they can uh, with the limitations they are seeing. So that's all from me, Nadira. I hope I've kept up to the time. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. No, the, the time was uh, perfect for you. And thank you for highlighting the, oh, the, most of the challenges we also faced and uh, the and how you all overcome and the, uh, particularly the innovation. Talking about the innovation, we move to uh, our uh, second uh, speaker, uh, uh, Mc, uh, McKnight, uh, Glenn McKnight. Uh, for they they innovated a program and uh, share uh, and uh, looking forward to hear their experience and it's it's been an ongoing uh, pro program. The floor is yours, uh, Glenn. Glenn is with us. Glenn, you're muted. Uh, yeah, please. yeah, it muted itself. So I I didn't mute it, but uh, somebody muted me. But here I am. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, Amrita did say a lot of the things that that um, is true for ourselves, and I'm sure it's true for everyone else. Let, let me just give you our personal experience, how we got into this. And 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 one of the things we we look upon, um, you know, a school of Internet governance, whether it's virtual or otherwise, basically surviving COVID requires a dose of education. So uh, we're we're looking at. Um, the, these it's not a complete solution what we're doing but it is it is a very important element of keeping the community together actually building capacity but let me let me just walk through some of the experiences we had so we concluded back in the fall in Montreal or or face-to-face -face NASIC school that's the North American school and that was quite successful 
and it it was actually a predated the um, the ICANN uh, Montreal, and that's one of the ways we've actually approached it. Uh, each of the uh, every year we've been doing the 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 North American School before the going into the ICANN meeting, and as you all know, the ICANN meetings have been. Um, you know, forestalled. So we were planning uh, to do um, the the next school in uh, in Washington in 2020, and then Seattle in 2021. But the reality sunk in that there was no way in hell that we were going to be able to do any of this. And so we started looking at at ways of doing this. And this was, if you recall, uh, in the early parts of 2020, uh, with COVID, you were running into issues of Zoom bombing. You were looking at, uh, uh, there wasn't really the solutions uh, that, that were out there, uh, whether WebEx or others. Uh, so, and, and some organizations, uh, Coursera and FutureEc, and, and a number of them were doing it, but extremely expensive. Uh, and so we had to look at a new reality. And, and so what we did, and starting in May of 2020, um, Alfredo Calderon and myself started looking at uh, ways of creating an, an online program. Not to say we wouldn't do NASA, which we will do a virtual one uh, in November, and then hopefully a hybrid or face-to-face -face one in San Juan of next year. But we needed to uh, come up with a virtual webinar format that was A, of value to the sponsors, because the, the whole purpose of this program had to be free. Um, it had to have controls and because, as I mentioned earlier, the Zoom bombing was a big problem. Uh, it had to have some methodologies built into it. And uh, MOOC was what we settled on. We settled on, on Moodle, the Australian tool. Uh, it had to provide administrative control on attendance, dropout rates, graduation rates. It had to um, come up with with all the parameters that a normal school would do that's that's face to face. Uh, faced with that also uh, marketing this idea, recruiting people, recruiting the speakers uh, to be on a weekly basis was a major challenge. Um, and then uh, we, we basically needed to look at the idea, is there gonna be accreditation or certification? So all of this stuff was was big uh, things to think about. And, and again, we looked at online experiences and, it, and like I said, it had to be seamless. It had to be a bulletproof online experience. There had to be a clear academic track in testing. And then we looked at uh, many of the examples, Coursera, GSMA, edX, Allison, Unitar, I can learn, I can learn. And, and all of them had elements that we liked and, and many of them, um, uh, didn't have what we deemed a, a, a community experience. But um, what, as you know, COVID came along, it's a crisis, yes, but it, it, not only it's a danger, and, and we all harp on the danger, but we sometimes forget the opportunities. And I would say there's been some great opportunities. Um, I'll just do a time check. I have a minute or two. Nadira? Yeah, 30 seconds for you, yes. Okay, so so we've turned this into something now, we're rolling into our, our fifth fifth program in English, our, our first program in Spanish back in, uh, uh, that started this month as well. But on TAP, uh, because we want a multilingual program, we're, we're hoping to launch in the new year, Portuguese and uh, French, in uh, 22, and, and we've reached out to potential sponsors and supporters like UNESCO, we have as an MOU for Russian, and, and we're talking uh, Bengala, Hindi, and Chinese. So, so from a little concept, because we, we, uh, we, didn't, we couldn't do the face-to-face, -face, we morphed it fairly quickly into building a product that now actually over 600 students later um, it's, it's proven successful for us, not to say we're not facing challenges and, and, and issues, 
but we'd love to see other courses as well. But uh, I excellent, think that's excellent. Excellent. Yes, excellent. Excellent. What you've been, especially, thank you, uh, Glenn, especially you, uh, you target a, a wider, the global, you reach global uh, participants. This is another thing uh, in contrast to our uh, uh, regional or either uh, national uh, SIGs. Uh, and uh, thank you for highlighting the technical issue. Uh, the technical challenges that we are facing and zoom bombing uh, this is a uh, this is an issue kind of uh, we kind of uh, assume it's and oversee it and it is good that it, good point uh, high highlighting he it here and uh, and as the future of the uh, moving to the, to the our third speaker sabrina Lynn, and uh, as we know, the capacity building, we tar targeting in newcomers and, 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 and the program of uh, PEGA is just to have in, uh, uh, directed to youth. And that's our uh, future generation, future leader into this field. So uh, the floor, uh, floor is yours, Sabrina, and share with us what mean and hope that we are still recruiting newcomers to this area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadira. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And um, truth is, I'm, I'm happy to share that we are still seeing uh, youth and newcomers who are interested to want to come. So that's a good sign for us. In fact, that's one of the key reasons why we decided to still even go ahead and organize some form of a PIGA in a virtual form this year. Um, so maybe just very quickly before I get into further details, I'm just going to take everybody through um, a very um, brief background about what a PIGA is, is like, for those who may not be very familiar. So PIGA is the Asia Pacific Internet Governance uh, Academy. It was started in 2016. It's co-hosted by ICANN and the Korea Internet Security Agency, which is KISA. Sorry, I hope everybody can see my slides. Yes, okay. So we don't do this alone. Uh, we do collaborative programming with the great help and support of various regional organizations such as EPNIC, .Asia, ISOC, and so forth. Uh, it's targeted at youth leaders across the entire APEC region, age 18 to 35, because most of them tend to be university level students. It's held annually uh, in summertime during summer break. Uh, it's for five full days in Korea. And uh, we usually have a very highly hands-on interactive sort of program. So maybe not so much on the lectures, but a lot more on gameplay, role-playing, discussions, and so forth. And we're very happy and proud of our alumni, uh, especially knowing that one in four of them continue to actively participate within the wider uh, internet governance space, whether at, at ICANN or elsewhere. Uh, so you can imagine if this is traditionally how a PIGA looks like, you can imagine that when it came to COVID. So essentially last year, we had to just cancel it outright. Um, basically, no travel was possible. And we felt that if it was going to mean uneven um, participation from different parts of the region, because some people can fly and some people can't, then, you know, it wouldn't, it, we wouldn't be comfortable with that sort of thing. Uh, so as much as possible, since there wouldn't be equal participation, we, we, we couldn't go ahead with it in physical form. At the same time, we didn't have much experience with like how you organize virtual events yet, let alone if how we're going to organize a virtual school. Um, this is especially because we also usually have like about a six month planning window. So if traditionally the school happens in summer, six months before then, when we start would be actually quite early in the year last year. And I'm sure um, everybody uh, remembers Early last year is a time when everybody was still grappling with COVID and trying to figure out what was really going on. Um, but we did manage a couple of small things instead. So end of last year, we had in a PIGA homecoming event for alumni. This was a hybrid event uh, where we managed to gather all the alumni to date and um, they managed to catch up with each other, uh, network, uh, offer each other mutual support. Everybody could catch up on how they're doing, coping with COVID, um, how they're internet governance journey has been like, if they need any help and things like that. Um, so very quickly moving on to this year, um, we decided to actually go ahead and take the deep dive to try and see how it is that we could plan a PIGA in a pretty much fully virtual format. The key question for us is how do we deliver the same impact, the same kind of quality of programming that we believe in? How do we do that in the online version? And we realized actually very quickly that essentially in order to do that, we have to rethink our entire programming. Considering it's originally something physical and very highly interactive, 
clearly a lot of those things wouldn't just automatically translate into an online version. There's no straightforward online equivalent. So we, we pretty much took our program back to the drawing board. We stripped it down, um, looked it through. We sorted through what might work, what might not work in online form. Has anybody tried adapting you know, this kind of activity into an online version and so forth? Um, so we, we, we scrubbed it down and then we adapted what we could and then we discarded some things as well. The other thing also that we looked at um, in order to try and adapt the PIGA online is that we try to play to the strengths that there might be. So the, the question here is what else can you do if you're online? Uh, you know, if all you have to do is click a button and you can go someplace else and travel to be in some other place, what could we do? And it so happens this year, uh, Apiga is actually going to coincide with the ICANN 72 meeting happening at the end of October. So um, we're going to actually create, a, a for the first time, a special experience for Apiga participants, since generally they're all quite newcomers to this space and they're also maybe not very familiar with ICANN. We're actually going to bring them on a kind of like a insider tour of ICANN 72. Uh, and we're especially organizing some up close and personal sessions for them where they especially get to exclusively meet members of the ICANN board and also key community leaders from APAC. And at the same time, we'll guide them and um, you know, uh, let them attend certain ICANN 72 sessions. All this also forms the uh, background for them to to um, get a bit more experience and see what it's like, you know, for multi-stakeholder, you know, policy discussions. Because at the end of a PIGA, we're going to run our traditional role play where um, all the participants have to pretend they're in a stakeholder group and they're supposed to come to consensus discussions on certain topics. Uh, so all that is supposed to help them in the preparation for that. So that's one of the things that, that we're trying to innovate with. We're trying to think, you know, we're, we're trying to look at what is available and what's out there. Uh, if let's say Opigo were in physical form, I don't think we would have been able to do the same thing, like be able to travel everybody from Korea to an ICANN meeting as well and bring them around. That might not be possible, but you know, because right now everything is online, we actually have that opportunity. Um, so in the end, the final product that we've got, uh, just to summarize, we've ended up actually with a smaller program because we know some things may not work so well, I think. And um, for other things we realize because of things like Zoom fatigue, scheduling, resourcing constraints, uh, that smaller program is already spread over six weeks. And we're looking at like about uh, two sessions every week and it's like two hours each time. So it's also possibly fairly tiring for our participants. Um, so we think we're gonna start with that um, as, a, as a modest start and see Excellent. how it goes. I, yeah. Yes, excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, yeah, I mean, the, thank you. And it's it's uh, it's give the, the 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 program the innovation to the youth, and that's what you are doing. And uh, looking forward for your coming uh, model, and uh, hope to learn from it as well. Thank you, thank you for this. For thank you, Nadira. Mm. Happy to so, take questions later. Yes, we are, we'll leave that to the discussions. Uh, I'm sure you, you will have a lot of uh, questions. Uh, moving to uh, to uh, uh, another local uh, SIG from Bangladesh, uh, we have with us uh, Muhammad uh, Anu, uh, Muhammad Abdul Haq Anu. Uh, your flo the floor is yours, and I, 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 unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend their program. Uh, but I, I remember their face-to-face -face program was amazing. Let's hear from you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Nadir, uh, Nadira. Uh, this is Mohammad Abdullah Konu from uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, National SIG Coordinator, Bangladesh School of Internet Governance, and Secretary General Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. Our mission, the Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum, attempts to bring people together from various stakeholder groups as well in discussion on public policy issue related to internet. IGF Bangladesh has introduced the School of Internet Governance as a free event. Our vision, empowerment via knowledge, objective to motivate the stakeholder on learning, IG to educate next generation towards IG, create good team to support local IGF. We are organizing first IGF 2017, and uh, next year we are organizing 2018, our second BDC. Uh, th uh, third BDC, we are organizing 2029. Uh, and 
Fourth BGC, we are virtual mode, uh, is hybrid model. Uh, so, uh, hybrid, not only virtual model, uh, we are organized 2022. 2022, uh, we are organizing uh, virtual uh, BDC among local and international uh, lecturer and our sp uh, session speaker are joining with us. 2022, two days event and eight hours, uh, 10 sessions and 14 speakers, local and international and participants, 93. This year, 2021, is fifth BDC we are organizing. This year, our is sponsored by APASA, ICANN, Internet Society, APNI, Google, and BDIX. This year, uh, we BD6, two days, 10 hours, uh, 11 session, 27 local and international speaker, and participant, 256. Our opportunity and challenges this year we are facing. Uh, connected rural areas, this is our opportunity. Ensure youth participant, this is our opportunity. Create a community in rural area, this is our opportunity. Increase willingness about the school among the stakeholders. Challenges, organize advanced level school for the BDC graduate on emerging technology, lack of lab support for the graduate, could not develop a country level resource pool on local language. This is our challenge. Curriculum could not recognize by any educational institute. This is our challenge. Achievement, BDC graduate, 464 stakeholder in five batch and mobilize the stakeholders, including government sector, civil society, private sector, technical community, academia, youth, and media. Policy expert, resource person, policy makers share their knowledge and strengthen the capacity of the stakeholder on the internet process. Galvanizing effort for nationalization, nationalization and localization of internet governance in Bangladesh. Our achievement, showcasing internet governance process and initiate related agenda at the national level for empowering, voicing and amplifying of multi-stakeholder. Our another achievement, foster dialogues with stakeholders for empowering, creating a space and influencing power for the intensify the internet governance process in Bangladesh. Thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, Anu. You, uh, it's very interesting, uh, the point uh, which I really found uh, different and all, I always look for it. It's uh, reaching the rural area. And that's that's kind of a, an achievement because most of mm -hmm. our the SIGs are kind of directed to kind of little more uh, exposed to the to, to the uh, different the events uh, are and the events usually happened in the capitals and the, the bigger cities. And what, what you are doing, and this is an amazing step, the word uh, inclusive. Uh, so I congratulate you for that. And, uh, and thanks also for uh, having the, the, uh, the, the multi-stakeholder model going on. With, with it. This is another challenge. Uh, congratulate, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Um, thanks. And moving now to Olga, uh, and that's uh, from the other side. And thank you, and Glenn, for being able to have uh, being with us with this very challenging time for you. Uh, and we'll, let's hear from, from your experience, Olga Cavelli. Thank you. Thank you, Nadira. Can you hear me well? Yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to see all my friends from other side of the world. Uh, from Buenos Aires, it's 4 a.m. in the morning here, but I'm very happy to, to share our experience with you. Um, our school started in 2009, focus in Latin America and the Caribbean. We have been growing steadily in the amount of fellows that we have. We started with 30 fellows and we, we had uh, the last face-to-face -face meeting we had was in Mexico in 2019, Glenn was there. We had about 250 fellows uh, face to face, a five full day of activities. 
So when the pandemic started, we had this question, should we do it? How we do it? How can we arrange such a big program with all these people in a virtual format? So I personally refuse to have a normal Zoom meeting. I, I didn't like that. I didn't want that. So we went to, um, we went to find, we wanted to find a company that could do something like a TV style meeting, online meeting for us. Uh, I don't know if I can share my screen. I have some pictures to show you. Please let me know if you can see it. Can you yep. see the picture? Yes, you can well, see it. Th that is the infrastructure that we used. It's a TV, it's a studio. We, we rented a company that, uh, that was with us uh, all the time. Uh, and and uh, they had this very, very complex uh, infrastructure, which was extremely expensive, but I, I refused to have a normal Zoom link. And we also refused to have a, a, shorter, um, a shorter program. So we went, with the same five day program, eight days, uh, eight hours per week in this studio. And we had all the panelists from, uh, from afar, apart from us, me and, and very few uh, from our team that were in the, same, in the same studio. So the challenges were that this, it was very successful. So the, 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 the way that the people participated uh, the, this company, so you can see there, I am, I am present there, and then all the people are participating from abroad. The challenge was um, the, the, the money <laughs> that the, the company costs. It's, it's extremely expensive. And uh, um, so all the budget was used for that. Um, other challenge was um, to have the fellows uh, engage uh, through a five-day program with uh, eight hours per day. But, but we had a very high attendance, about 200 people per day. We, we sent everything on YouTube as well. So we have translation English, Spanish all the time. It, since the very beginning, 2009, we had translation. So we used YouTube as, um, as the, the connecting way uh, with, with fellows. But fellows were in a special Zoom room with a seminar format. So we could handle the questions and answers, we could, we, we could handle the comments. And uh, one, uh, so the challenge was the cost of this infrastructure it was very expensive. You can see in our YouTube channel, SSIG LAC, all the different sessions. We usually had uh, more than 100 speakers. So we had 100 speakers plus uh, in last year and uh, much more fellows from abroad. And the thing is that we had fellows from all over the world, even from Asia Pacific. Uh, so big challenge was the, bu the budget, big challenge was uh, having the people attending the eight hours program. And this year we added, um, we will do exactly the same next week. So if you can, you can participate online with, um, with YouTube, with our YouTube channel and, um, um, the, the challenge was paying for this very expensive infrastructure, but the good thing is that we could have a much more experts from all over the world. Usually we'd ask them to be present in our meetings, in our face-to-face -face meeting in Latin America, and for some ex experts from abroad, that was extremely, not only expensive, but it takes a lot of time to travel south. So now uh, you can have many experts that they can allocate two hours in their in their agenda and participate virtually. So that was that was good, and we have fellows from all over the world. What we what we add this year is two months uh, virtual self-assisted program to train the fellows from from before. Mm -hmm. So we had five hundred fellows that have been having this training that will participate next week in a five day, eight, eight hours per, per day oh. uh, program. Oh, excellent. Uh, you're reminding me uh, with, uh, that's, uh, you always come with innovation uh, solution. In fact, you're reminding me with uh, what the, uh, the Minister of Education has done here uh, to, to stream the classes to the community uh, during the pandemic. And that's excellent for a SIG 
to, to move to this direction is, uh, is amazing, but it is very costly, as you mentioned. Looking yeah. forward to your uh, coming session, and we are, you are welcome to share it here as well, so that the people can uh, follow your, uh, your uh, coming uh, events. Uh, with this, we uh, end up our uh, uh, the first part of our uh, the shared experience, uh, the the program that's been cut, uh, been uh, the issues which be being raised, and uh, let have let's hear from our audience and uh, to see their point of view and their inquir inquiries. And here we have, I'll move to uh, this is part to Ashita, my colleague. Yes, thank you, Nadira. I haven't seen any questions yet, but I see the conversation between Shah and Glenn on the evaluation of the parameter on how do you measure the effectiveness of this, this course uh, since it's moving towards virtual. So perhaps if, if Glenn, uh, Sabrina, and all the speakers, uh, uh, Amrita, Olga, and Muhammad can, can share with us, how do you measure the parameter? Or else I will wait as well from the, the chat room for people who would like to ask questions, please do so. Amrita, you want to go first? Yeah, thank you, Shita. I think uh, measuring parameters of success depends on what issues you want to see. For example, one could be after undergoing the course, is that participant participating in other IG issues actively uh, or even spreading it into the community? Two could be if they are participating in the discussions within their own place. Three could be whether they are spreading the word and more people are coming over. So there are various parameters of success. You know, I would say one is engagement, future engagement, not only in your sake, but in others also would be good. For example, there are people who have done one sake, they've gone into virtual sake and perhaps gone into um, Olga's um, School of Internet Governance. So they move. And it is good that if they go around or they go to AP sake, they learn because every school has their own flavor. Certain things remain common, but there are differences. And I think the differences is important because then they understand how IG is. It is not, you know, one single black color. There are gray shades also. Okay, but do you also do the, this is a question for others. You also do some like pre-test and post-test in the virtual, the same like what you do in an offline. Perhaps you go to Glenn, you may. Yeah, yeah. Um... Let me let me just say that, um, and I agree with what Amrita has said um, that you know you have to do follow up and you have to nurture. To uh, this doesn't come natural. You're, you're not having the discussion that you normally have. You you, you this is a, a a very artificial environment for a lot of people because they're normally a school. You get to know each other. You have a coffee or you have some social events. You're, there's many things to in actually to nurture a relationship with the other students or the teachers. So this is this is a bit of a forced situation. The only common thing you have is that you were able to get into a course and you're taking it. Some people are there because they're really motivated. Some people are there, they have time on their hands. Some people are there, they just want a piece of paper, you know, uh, and and. Uh, you know, uh, we we have uh, we have a situation, and I was discussing with our advisory council last week, and um, which is an element of our, our organization is what do you do with people who enroll and they never show up, right? And and we all have that in the virtual situation. In the case where it was face to face, you you know people do show up. You can physically touch them, uh, so that that's a bit of a, a number. So you got to you got to uh, adapt to that. And there's some administrative time you have to spend to reach out to those individuals. And in the, the case of um, many of our, our Haitian students, uh, they had an earthquake and they had a political uprising, right? So you have to be adaptable and, and reach out to them and hopefully they'll reach out to you. And then if they can't do the, this cohort, you, you remember that, you record it and you actually slip them in to the next one if possible but you know you there's some adaptability that has to be done remember we're all under pressure to produce the best product possible we don't do everything perfect uh we learn as we go along and and because we're all in the same boat we're learning from each other what olga has done is remarkable 
uh, like, no, I don't think, you know, I remember Olga, we did the interview together with the DC coalition. Uh, you know, it just have to look and talk to the other schools. This is a very unique product that, and Olga was very nimble. She, um, and, you know, she had a choice to just stay and doing what she does. Right. And, and she doesn't, she doesn't need to do this. Right. She's, you know, uh, but she's so motivated her and Adrian that, you know, and, and I, and how many, uh, I've, at least four or five, I've been with you, helping you. But I've I've had the good fortune of being with Insig, and 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 uh, Amrita doesn't like my dancing. I have to let, tell you that. But uh, I've been to African school. I've been so many different schools that oh, sit, sit. oh, I we have somebody. Somebody's telling me he likes my dancing, but that's all I have to say. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, one somebody would like to exp, uh, express their opinion, Sabrina, Anu, or Olga. Olga first. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chita. Uh, thank you very much, Glenn, for your comments. And yeah, he, Glenn has been our 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 friend from several schools and also our photographer. Fantastic pictures that you can see in our <laughs> website. The best pictures that we have are from Glenn. Uh, about about how how you measure the the, the, the outcome. Our, our most important outcome is, is seeing many young people that started with the school. Now they are very engaged and have a very good work, um, have, have got very good positions in different companies and organizations. And they started with the school motivated by, and, and, and one thing that we, we got, and that was not expected at the beginning, but then we realized it was very important, was how the network um, is created among them. So they, they get engaged with, with the speakers, with the fellows, with friends, and from there they build their own career. So this is, this is something very important. We don't have exact numbers, but we can see that it's happening in Latin America. At the same time, I agree with Glenn that you, you cannot avoid people that just don't show up. So what we did this year with this uh, um, eight week program is that we created a self-assisted tool with Kahoot. It's, a, it's an online tool. And then we measure their participation from there. So we noticed that from the, the, it's a kind of 20% that they just don't react uh, among 500. So we, if, if they do participate and they do the Kahoots and they do the, the online uh, questionnaires, they will get a certificate. This year, the certificate is granted by our school and by the um, Commission of uh, Telecommunications of the Organization of American States. So if they do all these this, uh, steps, they will get the certification. If not, well, they can, they can participate in silent and, and not show up. That, that's an option and, and you, can, you have to accept that as well. So that's, uh, and, and Glenn said something interesting, we have to adapt and uh, we have to realize that this kind of uh, online trainings have, uh, many people start and they don't finish. I myself um, in, engage in sometimes in, in many meetings that I, I don't have time to attend or I don't have time to follow. It's not that I'm not interested. I have to work and I have many other things to do. So this is part of the experience. Nothing replaces the face-to-face. Uh, networking, but uh, but this is a different style, and and I think it, in the future we will have this blend, this blend uh, meetings. Yeah, but I think you are also very creative, Olga. I mean, you make this, this TV style, but also multi platform. You have Kahoot, self assisted Kahoot, and you also have this YouTube and Zoom together. So it's it's very creative and very innovating. Yes, uh, Anu. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to just uh, say, uh, it is very difficult to set up parameter, but the school is a unique product which helps to create awareness about emerging technology. This is my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sabrina, would like to share from your experience from APIGA? Sure. I, I think for us at APIGA, um, we see a blend of a lot of the things that Amrita and um, Glenn and Olga were also saying. So in terms of effectiveness, we don't really have like very, you know, typical hard metrics to measure things by. We also look at, you know, how active the alumni are after they finish with a PIGA, where else they go on to, are they engaged, are they, you know, trying out different things. Um, so it's, it's not like a hard and fast rule for us either. Um, 
And to the question of like whether there's any sort of like pretest or exam, when it was the physical form, we actually have, you know, we're a bit stricter about some things that they are supposed to do, make sure they, you know, can really check off on certain, you know, online modules and things like that that you take. But in the in a virtual form, we also understand it's a lot harder for people to always stay focused online. It's going to be six weeks at a shot. They're they're juggling tons of other things at the same time, school and work, um, you know, all from their living room. Uh, so we understand. So some of these things also we have um, softened them a bit a bit more. So we're not really looking um, for the same thing. But one of the things that we we really wanted to try and find ways to to still maintain is. The networking part, so like what Olga was sharing about how important it is for all the participants to also use the, the school as an opportunity to really network, network with mentors, community leaders, people who can help give them continuing uh, support or avenues that they can reach out to even after the program is over. How do we still maintain all that? I mean, when we have five days in Korea, we're together 24 seven. So outside of class time, everybody is just hanging together. We can chat about anything under the sun. We become friends, and how do you maintain that in an online form? You know, instead of it just being uh, only like class times, and you know, so um, for us, one of the things that that we're gonna try doing is an experiment in a way because um, you know, a, a PIGA in virtual form is only gonna start this Friday. But what we're gonna do is we're going to um, create open consultation sessions. It's a bit like how in university professors have their weekly open consult sessions that students just walk through the door and they can talk about anything or ask anything. So we're going to have some of those built in uh, where we have mentors who will just be there. It's an open office kind of situation. People can come in if they want, if they have questions, or even if just to chat and get to know the mentors better, really on a social basis, just to network, just to get to know each other. It's totally open and like free and easy. So we're going to try that out and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also coming from the, what Glenn mentioned about nurturing, networking, but also nurturing relationships. M may I go to Satish uh, and to share a bit of his experience uh, in the European SIG, Satish, your experience there? You want to share uh, something? Thank you, Shita. Um, uh, this is Satish, and uh, I can share uh, very briefly about the SIG and also a few thoughts about the post-COVID uh, situation. Uh, I think I was uh, kind of uh, introduced to uh, the internet governance as a whole uh, at the European Summer School. This was 2012, and it propelled me directly to the uh, organizations like ICANN and Internet Society. Uh, it was an incredibly useful uh, event, not just to learn, but also to interact and build up networks, which is one of the functions of a good uh, uh, school on internet governance. So uh, that has been a very interesting experience for me. Now, coming back to the issue of post-COVID uh, scenario, um, the, the main issue that I see is that uh, the, the courses are of reduced duration. Uh, I mean, of course, Olga's uh, uh, is a very different and exceptional case, actually. But for most other schools, we have to cut down the time. Therefore, the number of topics that we discuss is also cut down. And the interactions also cut down. So uh, the net effect is that uh, it is not like a face-to-face -face school. There is a significant loss of quality. I'm not sure how this can be uh, kind of fixed uh, because this is, uh, you can't have people sitting in front of the uh, computer for more than you know, say two or three hours. It's going to be very hard to sustain that because already people have talked about the Zoom fatigue. So, uh, and it's also not very feasible to, uh, you know, pull, uh, extend the number of days. Now three is normally seen as a kind of optimum. And more than that, we have again, the con constraints of fatigue and stuff. So uh, we are uh, in a kind of bind about this. And also the hybrid model uh, should be explored. Although none of us have any idea how we can have a hybrid uh, school. APC is actually proposing a hybrid school this time, but we do not know whether it will work out because of the travel restrictions. So I'll stop here and back to you, Shita. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Shatish. I think uh, most of the speakers here, aside from Olga, in my, in my opinion, uh, say that they have to shrink the uh, package, the, the programs, uh, make it more simpler or uh, fewer days or fewer hours. Uh, before, because we only have like 10, uh, 10 minutes to go, I think we need uh, Nadira go back and then ask the uh, panelists to have their own last say one, one minute per panelist, Olga. Yeah, sorry, Nadira. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Shita. Uh, in fact, uh, we already kind of uh, heard from them, but it's not. It's good to wrap up. One point I, I want to like about the impact of uh, the program. Who took the program? I received an email from uh, one of our alumni who attended last year, and it said, "Thank you." She's from Vietnam and uh, happy to have some new newcomer to the field. And that's uh, and she's looking forward to the coming event. Uh, this is kind of uh, I see. I think these programs are, are effective. Uh, one or two. And, and usually uh, and usually uh, uh, with, with such uh, programs, even at university level, usually you can't reach out to everybody. You, you, there is a certain percent who really grasp the, the topic. So from here, I, I, I like to go back the same order with our uh, panelists to have their uh, last uh, 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 word on it, uh, starting with uh, Amrita, please. Thank you, Nadira. Quickly, I would say we are all learning. We learn from the best practices of others and we want to innovate. We like the comments coming in uh, in terms of how to increase engagement. We understand the issues which participants go through. Um, we want to make them more innovative within the limited resources we have. Um, and yes, I hope we can deliver much better uh, six this year than last because last year was more of a learning session. That's about it from me, Nadira. We are always there. If you have comments, reach out to us. Our websites are all known to all of you. As an INSIG is happening in November 19th onwards, in case you're interested, we'll have the fellowship opening up. Please do apply. Thanks, Nadira. Thank you, Amrita. Uh, let's uh, hear from Glenn, uh, please. Yeah, my, my final comments is, is that we, we are all, all of us are, are trying to, to adapt our our product to the marketplace. Uh, life is a hard school, as they say. So we, but you know, looking at history, uh, every time there is major upheaval, uh, there's new opportunities. So, and and I think what what we've done with VSIG and what Olga has done with her production quality, uh, you know, per, uh, delivery is it, two examples of what actually can be done. Uh, what we're going to do in the future, I'm not really sure. Uh, new courses, maybe, uh, you know, uh, secession planning, um, you know, that it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, but, you know, I've said it in the, the chat, people are getting tired of, of they're getting zoomed out. Uh, you can see it in many, many, many things, whether you look at the ISOC uh, live stream or others, there's very little activity, very little, you know, in theory, you would say, oh, there's these, this live chat and, and everybody's talking to each other and they're connecting. Not necessarily. You, you know, we, we all of us are craving. We're dying to have a face to face. You know, uh, I'm the first one to say, give me the face to face session. So, uh, yeah, we'll survive. But, uh, you know, it's been a tough couple of years. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, let's hear from uh, Sabrina. Thank you, Nadira. Um, for us, for certain, we're still we're still learning a lot. Um, for us, this is the first time we're adapting a PIGA to a virtual form, and it's only going to start this Friday and run for six weeks. So if we have a session like this again next year, then maybe I may be able to have a bit of a report card to share. Um, but one thing's for sure, um, you know, our, our standpoint is we would love to go back to having a physical school the moment it is possible. But truth is, nobody knows the future right now. So for us also, we realize that uh, it's better to start now, um, trying to see how it is we can adapt to at least have a virtual form so that we also gain that experience. Because if COVID continues and if let's say travel is not possible in the region and things like that, we may have to still continue doing it in a virtual form. So I think although everybody's tired, certainly I think the training needs for the youth in the region won't really like go away. The needs are still there. So. I think there is value in all of us trying to still continue in whatever way, shape or form that we can to try and offer these programs um, for everybody in the region. And hopefully um, they feel the same way since we do still see people coming forward. So uh, thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you for uh, being with us. Uh, let's hear from uh, Anu, please. 
Thank you, Nadira. I have just two uh, points. Uh, we have still we are uh, learning uh, the seek process, and we have limited resource. Uh, uh, this is our observation. Thank you, over to Nadira. Thanks, Anu. And last but not least, let's hear for a uh, special uh, 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 Olga, please. Thank you, thank you, Nadira. Thank you, friends, for sharing your your thoughts and your experience. We will have our 13 school uh, South School of Internet Governance next week from 4 to 8 of October. I know the timing is not convenient for you, but some of you have joined last year. So you are all invited to join us in our YouTube channel, SSIG LAC. I will send you some, some brochures if you want to distribute among your community. Uh, we had 3,500 requests wow. for fellowship and we admitted 500. That was record this year. We organized it with the Ministry of ICTs of Colombia. It's our virtual host this year. And, uh, uh, but the full program is open to the whole community in Spanish and English in, in our YouTube channel. So I think that uh, as, as, as Sabrina said, we will see what happens in the future. But uh, I think we have learned a lot and we have to adapt. And one, one thing that, that really strikes me is that some, some sponsors think that doing an online training is cheaper. That's not, a, that's not true. It's very expensive if you want to really make the difference. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. And in fact, uh, to, to the last point, I want to see a, an observation. We are talking about the virtual and we have an audience is around 60 audience. And uh, I am kind of wondering why, the, why we are not hearing their voice and we, we, we allowed for this 20 minute discussion. And uh, this is a, a, a big question. Uh, now I'm uh, giving this, the floor to, 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 to wrap up the session for Sheeta and uh, thank you. Thank you all. Yes, yes uh, thank you, Nadira. I think, uh, yes, you are correct. I think we have to, we have to put some comments from the audience. Uh, what I got from the chat room is uh, an appreciation from Kian, Kiani and Payo about the School of Internet Governance, especially the involvement of young people into the program, because uh, Internet Governance is very diverse and, and newcomers like the youth uh, need the guidelines for getting involved. We also have some comments from Masu, uh, who, who actually shared with us the, the, this, this pandemic, it's not only school closures, but also really an, an abrupt and of some of the people's life. Uh, he mentioned about the children we have begun working, married or become parents and, and that, that definitely change uh, the landscape right away for them. So those are the three comments that I received uh, from the chat room. Uh, I would like to a bit wrap it up. Uh, I think there are three key issues. Uh, the first one is tweaking. Uh, so we tweak the, the sessions uh, you, uh, from experience. You also tweak the parameter or changing the parameter. You also tweak uh, the, uh, the process, yeah, uh, because it is, uh, as, as Glenn mentioned, it's uh, adaptability. Uh, and Amrita mentioned about some of the innovations that she had in Mumbai. Uh, the video from, from Mumbai, for example. Uh, this pandemic also has made uh, a positive and negative impact for the School of Internet Governance. The negative impact is the less interactions, Zoom bombing, uh, cost expensive. Yeah, it's not, not cheaper. It is actually very expensive uh, if we would like to do it as creative as Olga. Uh, and also funding is also difficult because it's different landscape. Uh, we will also have a positive point, such as it's, it can include uh, larger people. It, it also, I think, from the virtual school of internet governance, it also can create a multi-language uh, program uh, so that people, many people can attend. Uh, from, from, from Sabrina, I heard that there is an opportunity to bring people to from all over the world to meet people from ICANN, which is actually difficult if it's have to be done uh, face to face. Uh, and, and from Anu, he mentioned about connecting to the rural and youth, which is very much uh, necessary at this point. Uh, and last but not least, Olga mentioned about the multi-platform hybrid sessions on the TV styles, uh, YouTube, Zoom, uh, Kahoot, yeah, for the self-assisted uh, program. 
So those are the innovations, the ups and downs of the School of Internet Governance have to face during the pandemic. I think I can close it here. Uh, and I would like to say thank you for all the participants and all the panelists. I'm, I'm apologies if I'm not getting all the chat room, uh, for the, all, all the comments from the chat room. Uh, I hope you enjoy your day, whatever your time it is now, your time zone it is now. So thank you very much also for Satish, uh, for AP6, who, uh, who, moderate, who hosted this event. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Take care.